the big one out there waiting for us, boy. Won't be long now. We'll be up on top of it. Okay, back again. November the 13th. The Trent Price raiding the uh, off morning moose on. It's not a real good morning. It's probably uh, it's a 70 kilometer wind, so you never know. It might work out. It's still direct of course. We're just leaving home. So, wish us good luck. Here's a boat that we got lined up. We don't know for sure if we can get a chance at it or not. He's slowly walking across the the bogs. Nice little bull. Windy, really windy. If you want to slow down now, we may have a chance. For all of us who's familiar with moose, uh, knows that if a moose is traveled, even though it looks like he's just walking really slow. Uh, if we were to leave and try to walk to where he is right now, by the time we got there, he could be another at least 500 yards away. A friend of ours, Robert Robinson, was with us as well. And with it being so windy, uh, as you can see down there, over on the far left, I guess you'd say, you see a big bog. A road travels beside that bog, so me and Trent was going to go around and set up by that big bog and Robert was going to leave from this side and walk down through the valley and try to stay to the right of the moose or where we last seen the moose in that green woods and hopes that he could uh, walk through the woods the right way and flush the moose because generally when moose uh, we've seen moose when they leave and go across this valley they always cross that bug over there where me and Trent is going to go but I know with the wind and with the wind blowing started as this not very likely uh, the bull would come out on the bog, but we had no other choice, so that's what the plan was. The Robert was going to try to flush the moose over to that bog. All right, the plan is uh, we've seen the moose this morning, me and Robert Trent over here on that ridge, right on top. We were on top, the moose was down in the valley down there, and he's gone in the green woods, and uh, we're going to hope that uh, Robert's going to be able to flush, and flush the moose over toward us. Windy day, as you can hear, and uh, I don't know if it's going to work, but it's worth trying, as well. So we're having a quick lunch now, and Robert's getting ready to walk into the woods, try and drive it to us. We're all ready. Well, we waited for nearly an hour and uh, no show didn't show up. So it just meant that uh, we had to uh, go moose hunting once again another day, which didn't uh, really offend us, <laughs> to say the least. Okay, it is day two. Day two of Trent's hunt. Didn't work at first day there. As you can see, this morning, we've gone to a different area. Trent is just over there to my left, waiting for the daylight. The beautiful sunrise we got this morning to look at. Absolutely gorgeous. It's a little bit windy again, but that's all you can expect in Newfoundland. So, just hope that when it once it gets daylight, we'll see a few moose. We'll see what happens. Here we are, doing it again. Got a big one out there waiting for us, boy. Won't be long now, we'll be up on top of it. Perfect. That's the one that's going to do the job. Very good. <laughs> Let's go. I don't think uh, anyone uh, feels that Trent, Trent is a liar, but uh, this don't sound real convincing. But anyway, we're having a good time, and uh, we we're going to have a little bit of a different day today with all the snow down and it was noisy it was, the snow was crunchy so we had to deal with it and we were pushing our luck a little bit more today was the last day for Trent uh, to be able to move something so for a uh, little bit for a bit of luck he brought his father along and, uh, Mr. Billy Prouse he's with us and uh, we're gonna see if, uh, if he can bring us a bit of luck and uh, 
sure we'll have a good time and if we get some moose or not. Okay, we see a few moose and uh, we got our plans made. <laughs> Don't know it's going to work. We see two lovely bulls over across that pond. I'm going to try to zoom in on them and show you where they're two. One that we're going to get, I'm going to guess 11 or 12 points out of them got 16 or 17 in my mind. There's one, that's the one we want right there. See he's played against the snow when he puts his head down of course. There you go. See he got a nice plate so his other boat on the left side. And then there's another cow right there. Or a cow, not another cow, a cow so. We got lots of ears, blessing for us. That's off a crossy, but take our time and do it right and get it to work. So the plan is, of course, to make a big loop, go on up on the back of that ridge and come down around Tavo so we can see, see down on them. So if we don't frighten any other moose when we make the circle, it'll work, but there could be moose standing that we can't see. But that's the chance we got to take. Trent uh, let his father know just what. Our plan was explained to him what we what we had in mind, and the uh, the hunt was on. We had to give it a try. Like I said, it was the last day, so come on, come on. whatever. And it, uh, Trent wouldn't pick you now. If we if we didn't see those big bulls again, it didn't matter. As long as the bull came out, that's all that matters. So uh, we had a good feeling that something was going to happen before the day was over. Well, this crunchy snow uh, wouldn't help on us at all. By the time we got over to where the moose were, uh, they heard us coming, and we made a big circle, but still, I don't know, must have been another one closer to us that we didn't realize. But anyway, they all ran over the ridge where we wanted to go. So they were a lot further away, plus it was a rough hunt, rough walk, I should say. But over the other side was a big bog and a big spot of green woods, so that's what we figured that they must have went for, and uh, just, just for cover. So we're here now to the bog, and we got uh, Billy made into a beagle, and uh, see if we can flush one out to us. Oh, we were there about maybe a half hour, and we heard a crack in the trees, and when we looked, here was the moose coming out on the bog, right in front of us. No more than, you know, 50, 60 yards away. Perfect chance, gonna be a good video, so we got ready to let him walk out and uh, just try to pick out uh, the one he wanted. Here's a good situation that a lot of people need to see. Uh, these moose was walking out in front of us, you know, like I said, they were only 75, maximum 75 yards away at, at the moment. and. Uh, a lot of people, you know, would be in a panic here, uh, you know, making a noise, trying to get in position, trying to shoot, but Trent just kept his cool and, you know, just enjoying it, letting these things walk over to us. You know, he could have took a head shot, you know. He could have took a neck shot, stuff like that, but, you know, there's no need of it. You know, and, and a, lot of, a lot of moose gets crippled because people just don't wait long enough to get a good good kill shot. You know, it's not, it's not about trying to... Uh, trying to be a sniper just you know it's, it's better to wait and uh, at least get get a good ethical shot and make sure you get your moose instead of having another one going off crippled so
Okay, take that one there. We wouldn't for sure if uh, Trent's moose was gone down, so we just stood around and watched the uh, other moose for a few minutes before we, we decided to walk over, take a look. Here. Hi, Harrison. Okay, well, we didn't see him fall. How you feeling, buddy? Look at me, talk to me. I don't think he went very far. No? He's not big, but he's going to have to do for the last day of the season. That's right. But well, you, you, me choosers. you got me beat. I got an point. So, <laughs> I, think, I think you've got two points. I think he was. You had, you had uh, three to pick from, so. Yeah. Anyway, just go see if we can find it. He went out of our sight, so. You on his track? Oh, you see him? Oh, there he is. Yes, Lift that trophy up, buddy. Lift it up, show me the antlers. You need, need help? You need help? So we're swinging around. Drake on the rack. Well, Drake so, on the rack. Ah, uh, he's not any better than that. Perfect. I can't see his antlers. Are you his antlers covered? I'm covered up. Sorry about that. <laughs> what a beauty. There you go. Got to clean this up now and uh, get back for this dark. Hey guys, uh, I hope you're enjoying the video so far, uh, but uh, just a reminder uh, about this uh, free moose hunt in Newfoundland that I got up for grabs. Uh, it's still available and uh, uh, don't uh, let this chance slip, slip away. Uh, DVD sales are going great, but there's still some left. And uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, contest, uh, that once 600 videos are sold, and then I'll do the draw. So. Uh, Send me an email at uh, enlmoosehunt at hotmail.com and I'll explain to you just uh, just how to uh, take part in this uh, free moose hunt. So, yeah, just purchase a DVD and, and your name gets entered. So, uh, looking forward to hearing from you and uh, let's get back to the video and I uh, hope you enjoy the, the rest of the show. Here was the big boy and he walked right up to me. Wicket, go turdy turdy down it again. We just seen the big bull again that we never got a couple days ago. He's a 24 pointer. So he's a lot further away, but we'll give it a try. Just me and Trish. We gotta walk all the way to there, but I hope it pays off. I've never been at it before. So I'm not sure how rough it's going to be, but we can get it on. Uh, it was about a week or so uh, ago, uh, Daniel Sacre, a good buddy of mine, told me about this nice trophy bull that he's seen, and uh, thanks to him, I guess. Um, and anyway, so Trish had a, had a bull in license, and we were looking for a good one just for the fun of it. And uh, so we decided to come over in the area where 
Daniel said he's seen him. And the first evening he was there, I had Selena with me as well as my, my daughter. I want her to be there to watch Trish shoot her moose. And uh, as luck would have it, we uh, looked in over this big hill and sure enough, here was a nice bull bedded down, but I couldn't see for sure, you know, how big it really was. You can see by the videos, you know, you can only see one side of his antlers and you couldn't say for sure if he was a, you know, a 20 point bull or not. So instead of those guys having to go through all the work to walk down over the hill to get into where the moose was, we tried calling stuff to get the moose to stand up, but it just wouldn't work. And time was running out. And if I, if we couldn't get the bull, I wanted to at least get close enough so I can get some video. So I left Trish and Selena there on, on the hill, and I decided to walk down closer, not knowing exactly what I was going to see. When I got down to the bog, I made a few calls and it wasn't five minutes. And when I looked, here was the big bull walking across the bog, coming straight toward me. If only I had brought Trish and Selena. This was, a, this was the one that we were looking for. And it would have been a perfect video. You know, Selena would have had a chance to see Trish get her moose. You know, it was just a perfect setup. But the time just wouldn't dare for me to go back and get them, then go back into the bow again. So I just sat there and filmed as much as I could. And like I've said so many times, it's just, it was just unreal. He just walked right up to me. It was just something I'll never forget. After he got oh, 25 yards from me, I guess I wasn't sure how I was going to get away from him without spooking them real bad, you know? So I just stood there and never made a move and just waited until he finally turned around and eventually walked back in the woods again. And I was just open and praying that he, he wouldn't gonna be gone too far for the next time when we come back hunting him again. Uh, personally, I feel, I guess I can only speak for myself, but I think that uh, this, this type of bull, uh, the size, is few and far between now compared to what it was a few years ago. And it's just because there's so many licenses issued for it, for each area. And the only way that we're going to get this size moose back again is if we let the medium-sized bulls go. You know, don't, don't go shooting the medium-sized bulls. Just change our choices on our uh, big game application from either sex and bull only to uh, meat tag and trophy tag. A trophy tag being a bull moose with at least 10 points on either side. And a meat tag being a cow or a bull with a total of 10 points or less. Of course, this would have to apply to not only the resident, but the non-resident as well. Personally, I just think that it's a, it's a good idea, and I, I just hope that uh, someone's going to listen and uh, try and change our, our management system. As me and Trish made our way over to the bull, or where the bull was, uh, came across a brook that I didn't even know was there, and was just too much water on for her to cross, so I was going to do whatever it took to get her over to a, get a shot of this big bull. So I had to put her on my back and then cross the brook with her. So that, that was going to be interesting. This is what, this is what you call the uh... As soon as I got to the last little bank, little hill that I thought the moose was behind, when I looked over, sure enough, it was just standing up I made a couple of calls and here he comes straight toward us, just like we wanted. The only problem we really had was he was coming almost straight at us and I knew that most likely before he got too close he was going to try and circle us to get downwind of us. 
And all around us, besides this little window in front, was mostly all trees and so much cover that I knew it was going to be difficult to get a, a broadside shot. So I had to hope for the best and hope that Trish could place a little more difficult shot. And the, you'll see here in a minute that she didn't have a lot to shoot at, but the, I think she, she does a pretty good job. Okay, here's Trish coming up to her beautiful big bull. Wicket, the old turdy turdy done it again. Oh, 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 oh. See that? Man, or Wicket. Count the points for me. Everyone, want to count, speak up louder too. Can I count all these little Yes, everyone. Louder. I couldn't see any other way other than carrying it on our backs to get this move out of this. This thing was a beast and it was such rough country that I I don't know. I wasn't looking forward to it at all. Can't believe we got this thing. He got away from us the other day and lucky enough to come back today and I found it again. Just fluke to you truth. Yeah, he's, he's a real warrior. Get a lot of points broke off. His cutters broke off there. Been one here. He could have been three points, yeah. There's the debatable ones, but. We'll say that, Jessica. I call them all <laughs> points. There's the other side. You don't get much better than this Newfoundland. This is not the Yukon. Wicked. Yes, there's a big old moose. When uh, me and Trish went after the moose, uh, I messaged my buddy Daniel. And by the time we got to the bull, Daniel's back at the truck, <laughs> watching it all go down. And of course, once the bull was taken, he wasn't gonna miss it. And uh, he showed up and we had to get a picture. Then I think two of us are gonna then just me and you. You know. Leave the women out of it. You just let your finger rub, crash it off. <laughs> 